haven't you ever found yourself stuck in this position, endlessly flipping through the same channels of the television set, finding nothing that really interests you or nothing that you can relate to? Haven't you ever had an idea of a program that you would like to make and wished you could get a chance to do it? Community television could be the perfect opportunity for you because community television is accessible and locally relevant and will engage and involve as many people as possible in the process. It is the television for the people, by the people, and it is owned by the community. What defines community television is community control. The community is everybody. The community is essentially um, working class people. We're talking about mostly marginalized communities, those who have been historically alienated from the communication tool in, tools of this country. Different sectors, religious sectors, sports people, they all make up a community. The other communities of interest that we have haven't necessarily been excluded from the processes that we have been going through in South Africa. And I think it's important that the, the sectors that have been intentionally excluded should be intentionally included at this stage. Um, I don't think it excludes other communities, but that is essentially the community we want to see being represented mostly on television. The Act uh, defines community as uh, either a community of interest or a geographic community so that for a community of interest, it could be a community of students, a religious community, uh, a cultural community, like the Buddha Afrikaners, or you know, cultural workers, or whatever it is. So that's a community of interest. On the other hand, there's uh, the geographic community, as in, indeed, geography, Kailisha, or Soweto, uh, or Cape Flats, some such thing. What we're trying to do with community television is to create a tool for communities, whether it's urban or rural, to be able to develop and speak in their own voice, their own images. It would, and we hope that it would give a more realistic and honest picture of who the people in our country are, what they say, what they need, but more importantly to ensure that they become the media makers. <laughs> Throughout history, people have fought for the right to have their voices heard. Yes, freedom of the press, and the press knows that I stand for freedom of the press. But what I don't stand for, I stand for a responsible press. In South Africa, even with the stringent media and broadcasting regulations imposed by the apartheid state, people continued recording and documenting the events that shaped our country over the last 20 years. Today, with the transformation of our society, television is undergoing fundamental changes and communities are taking control of this medium for the first time. But why is community TV so important? People die in Alexandra. The whole country doesn't know about that because it's, it's not captured by the national, uh, our national television. And one is not trying to blame the national television for that, but what one is trying to do is to show that the, uh, uh, the, the national television cannot cover everything and every square inch of the country. Community media and community Community TV exists simply because the mainstream media organisations do not give coverage to the sort of issues that these communities uh, feel are important. The very eye through which the community sees is different to the eye that the public broadcaster sees. The, the SABC sees things on a national level. The communities are very much in touch and affected by the very issues that they are covering through their programmes, through their camera. The SABC has been a little bit cloistered it's been a, a little bit removed from the community. Community TV goes a step further than the public broadcaster in that it recognizes the importance of the community at a local level in owning and controlling their broadcasting medium. In order for us to intervene in mass consciousness, to get people to start critically reflecting on issues such as rape, women battery, why women are viewed in a particular way, why black people are viewed in a particular way, why there are tensions in the Western Cape, that it's necessary for us to access 
the, the, the television to be able to reach a much wider net of people and to assist people to start asking potent questions around these things. Community television and the electronic medium have a critical role to play in the reconstruction and development program and will bring with it a range of developmental spin-offs like job creation, enhancing and promoting of small and medium businesses, human resource development and educational materials. Now for the first time in our history, community television is a real possibility. The new government and the Independent Broadcasting Authority support the community television movement and are working to ensure its implementation. Let's look at where community television began. The history of community access television is really focused around the United States of America where it was enacted as part of the First Amendment which guarantees everybody freedom of expression. Headlines of emotional favorite racist pig. You know, they all uh, want to make a living. They all have the American dream. Indeed, this is the only image that we've seen of a dead American throughout the whole Gulf War. The Gay Dating Game Show. I will work you, boy! 55 plus. Talk about being daring. Aborigines make their own programs. Totally turns New York inside out. And right now, that show is Voyeur Vision. The female Elvis. Why hunt all the more to hound dog? In South Africa, there are no community television stations in operation at this time. But initiatives from all over the country are well into development and hope to be up and running in the next few years. Even people from the poorest communities are expressing a growing interest in the medium of television. As an interim measure to the setting up of these stations, people could get experience in the industry through securing a window onto the national, commercial or regional broadcasters. We are also about to approach the SABC to, to uh, look at the possibility of, 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 of having a window on the SABC for community originated programming uh, for the period of time up until we, we have our own uh, transmitters, which will be obviously some time from now. Recently, a small group of people from the community of Cape Town had a chance to do just this when the IBA awarded the first ever short-term community television license to the Cape Film and Video Foundation to rebroadcast World Cup Rugby on a station called RWC TV. Cape Town Live it is. Hello and welcome. Thanks for choosing us to put a smile on your face. Chester Williams. Welcome by local Slack. Hello again and welcome to it. Welcome to RWC TV, the first truly independent... Kovas Kotzer, who is uh, um, connected to PSP Sport, figured out there was an opportunity on the basis of rebroadcasting to go for a temporary, um, a temporary license. And then I think uh, he talked to Glenn O'Leary of 6th Street. At that point it was purely a commercial venture, but uh, Glenn's a, a director of the foundation and I think he felt that there was a, a broader benefit to be had from the whole exercise as opposed to simply putting on a station that just ran recycled rugby games. The IBA Act makes provision that you cannot in, under no circumstances get a short-term license unless the license is held by a non-profit or, or then a Section 21 association which is an association not for gain in terms of the Companies Act, which the Cape Film and Video Foundation is. In the spirit of developing the industry, same as we have granted short-term radio licenses, we thought that uh, this is an entity that uh, could possibly pull it off because it appeared that they had some technical experience to be able to do that. We also said it's not enough to rebroadcast what uh, the SABC is going to, to be providing you. It's equally important for you to have the community participate. They created a one-hour community window called Rough Cuts. And then sometimes I feel like it's just nowhere set here. I mean, it's a real dump in the end of the world, but no, I really like it here. Rough Cut. Rough Cuts is attempting, to some extent, to showcase material and issues that the other people within the station are not, not prepared to, to, to cover. And I think they've, they, they're attempting to shy away from to a large extent. 
Well, basically what we're doing is supplying equipment to the people who are going to be making something like Rough Cut. So the camera is available, the studio is available, there are edit suites and that type of thing. So that's really how it's been done. So money hasn't sort of been handed out as such. It's basically a usage of, of equipment that, we, that we've offered them to give them the opportunity to get involved. Also with professionals, if the people who are doing that were not that au fait with how to do it, we're offering them <coughs> sort of professional help to, to get the thing together. To just rebroadcast rugby would means excluding the people uh, of the community and also of the environment that we all operate in. So it was always an idea to supplement the rugby with other programming material. It's a quite a strange combination, I think, showing Rugby World Cup games and then trying to put local content in. So I'd say that's probably unique and we, we sort of mend our way through that, you know, it's quite a difficult situation there. You have been involved in this kind of training for, the, for how many years, 10, 20, longer than that? Do, were you consulted? Do you feel that it was an open process? How Kvet has felt and how a lot of community organisations have felt in the past two weeks is used by the commercial sector to gain credibility. I mean, this is an experience that we've had in the Those past. historically disadvantaged uh, communities, and in that sense, they are participating in the station. Um, they're getting access, they're getting training, and the community is getting exposure. Um, and in that sense, I think it is, it is a real uh, community television station. I wouldn't say that Rough Cuts is a model, or the station is a model for community television. Creating a new generation of filmmakers doesn't only mean giving people access or training to technology. It would also then mean um, bringing people on board in the actual conceptualization of, for instance, community television and all that that would mean. In terms of the classical sense of what a community television station is, this is not such. It is a 30-day special events, temporary community license. That's what the IBA has called it. But in reality, when the IBA issues a, a special events license, they don't use the same stringent criteria as they do when issuing a permanent license. It's a rugby station. They just have community windows on it. So I wouldn't call it a community station. Community programming will be diverse, accessible and locally relevant. Community TV will create affirmative models of women, the aged, the youth and the other marginalized communities. It will service isolated communities, ethnicities and working class people. It will facilitate creation of participatory democracy and a just society through offering people access to this means of expression. If we look at the, the, the basic building blocks of what might comprise of a, of a community TV station, um, we're looking at the material, whether, whether that's been pre-recorded or whether you have a camera and you've gone out and shot that. Then you need a, a play-out machine, a vision mixer, maybe a camera in the studio with a presenter or continuity person. Um, going to a couple of electronic boxes that just keep the signal in check, then to a transmitter or to a microwave link that would link to a big transmitter in, in the vicinity, depending on the scale of the, of, the, of the project. But you can really trim things down. In order for community television to become a reality, they need to go on some sort of educational drive to inform their communities of what community television is, what the potential will be for how the community can input into community television, and that it will really be an access centre for people within a community to gain skills, training, and then produce programmes about issues that affect them on their day-to-day -day life. These centres will provide people with access to a resource, information, training, production, distribution and transmission facilities and can be located anywhere from community centres to mobile vans. Any person or group of people with a programme or an idea for a programme takes it to the video access centre where they are produced and then broadcast back to the community. A video access centre is really will be the heart of the community TV. The whole thing should run parallel while we develop the physical aspect of the community television uh, or the community video access centre. We need to also develop our skills, so those two need to run in parallel. Community initiatives are severely limited by a lack of training facilities, the capacity to manage projects, 
access to production facilities and a lack of awareness around the possibilities of this form of television. There are initiatives like the New Town Fulham and Television School and the Institute for the Advancement of Journalism in Johannesburg, the Community Video Education Trust in Cape Town, and the Fulham and Allied Workers' Organization in Durban, as well as others who are working with community initiatives to develop national and regional programs around community television. There needs to be quite comprehensive coordination of that. I mean, we all generally know what each other group provides and it's simply a matter of the umbrella body sitting down and working out how the various communities needs can be met by these various institutions. Five or six people within a community need to be selected who can be sent on a thorough course in various aspects of running a station and as I said before from a technical level, a maintenance level, managerial level and a production level. Training needs to happen as of now. If training doesn't happen now, then community TV might, well not, might not be a reality in the future. Because, it's a, because essentially what you're sitting with is a whole lot of people who are very eager to set up these, these, these networks but don't have the skills. Right now, we operate from anywhere. We meet in the field, we meet in the gardens, we meet in, in, in community youth centres. The issue is that these communities have got to set themselves up in a concrete way in which they have their own resources and can use that. For example, one of the things we've noticed here is there's just a tremendous problem with transport. There are still many challenges that face community broadcasters, like those of licensing, transmission and frequencies. There is only a limited number of frequencies available, which raises the question, will there be enough space on the airwaves for communities to have access? What uh, the IBA has said from day one is that our mandate is to promote all three tiers of broadcasting and that uh, what we need to do is to reserve frequencies for entrance into this market to ensure that uh, we do fulfill the mandate of the IBA Act. Given the limited frequencies for television, there is no way that uh, there would be say more than one uh, television frequency available in say Johannesburg so it just means that and in most other places in the country so it may mean that uh, all of the community initiatives would have to find a way of sharing that space. Community initiatives have identified two basic models for local broadcasting the macro and micro models. The macro model links community stations from the greater metropolitan area via microwave using one central transmitter. Besides giving greater coverage, this model also requires only one frequency and costs a lot less to set up and run. The typical rural or sub-metropolitan micro station services a community with a population of 100,000 to 600,000 people and broadcasts directly to the community. The advantage that television has over radio is that people's antennas are pointed towards the transmitter. So therefore your power requirements are not as great. You, know, very, you, you do, not, do not need the sort of power of people often think of for television. Uh, Centec will offer planning, that is planning uh, to cover the areas that the, the community broadcasters wish to cover. We will plan for them and, inf and give them information regarding what sort of transmitter power they will require and what sort of antennas will be required to cover the area and also what sort of masts or mast heights will be required to provide coverage in the specific area. And Centec will provide all that uh, free of charge. Ultimately, the type of transmitter needed by the local station will depend on the topography of the area, the size of the community, and the availability of the frequencies. People who are contemplating um, setting up community broadcasting initiatives, look at what's available already, look at what's around you. The chances are there might be a video workshop, a video access centre very often has been set up. Um, those things can be used to develop in the project towards a proper broadcasting um, station. Greater Durban Television is Durban's very own community access television station. Using a format like SVHS or Hi8, simple, simple, simple studio, um, basic lighting, 
you know, we could pos possibly start looking at putting a station together at about, from about 300,000 Rand, which would include the microwave link. The question is, where will these communities get the money to do all this? I think in terms of assisting that the national broadcaster needs to create a window. It needs to create a window of opportunity. But it also needs to make available its massive waste of resources to other sectors as well. But it needs to have the willingness and the urgency to create an industry. Because if it doesn't do that, it cannot truly be a public broadcaster. To kickstart, I mean, um, I think it's quite critical that we need to get a, a government commitment. Uh, because the, the, the RTP commits the government in democratizing information. Therefore, they should put uh, money where their mouth is. I would prefer a situation in which the community broadcasters themselves came forward to government with ideas, with projects about how government could fund and assist community broadcasters. We would like to see some form of, of cross-subsidization from the commercial sector to the community sector. Um, we, we have made submissions to the IBA in that regard, which talks about the establishment of a television fund, um, which commercial broadcasters could put a percentage of their profits into as a way of, of opting out of, of local content regulations. As a commercial uh, interested company, I'd much rather be forced to take in trainees that I can use afterwards or that can go back to the community than being forced to put money into a pot that is going to train them. Often you'll find commercial broadcasters want to use community television groups to further their own aims and say we've got the social responsibility program etc etc. I think community television groups need to be very careful when entering into contracts or agreements with commercial operators about the nature of that and how community television groups are going to benefit. I don't think one should say outright one shouldn't have a relationship with them, uh, but I think one needs to handle it very carefully. Our communities is what is of interest to us. We have to survive, we have to sustain ourselves. Relying on international funding is not going to take us much further because that funding is drying up at this stage. So we have to um, generate funding locally in South Africa. A lot of public and community television stations uh, survive on a third, a third, a third, as they said in Kentucky, a third of marketplace activities, so tape sales, dubbing, tickets, um, various services that they can be paid for. A third is project-based income, so maybe based around particular productions, and the other third is still grants, government um, and, and business donations. Community television has the advantage of being able to draw on a number of sources, potential sources of revenue, and only a lack of imagination is going to limit it. One of the creative ideas that we came up with as the community television sector is that we need to uh, invite local businesses to advertise on the community television because we certainly will be challenging the community and we'll be talking like them. And while it is experimental, I think we will give the commercial guys a run for their money and they certainly will be tapping on our hot talent. There's a principle of the right of access, the right to freedom of the airways. And as citizens of this country, we should have the right that our government put money into that and the commercial sector in creating that participatory democracy, in creating a viable and sustainable community television industry. Community TV will create that window for entry into the world of television for so many. It will create opportunities for all to gain access to the media. Through opening new channels of communication, community TV can play a meaningful role in reconstruction and development and creating unity, trust and identity. We need to bring the television closer to the people for they must be made aware of its potential. Community TV is the people's TV. Let us make it truly ours. When the media has been hijacked in every country, this country's got a very severe history of having a hijacked media. And it's essential that people take that back into their own hands or take it into their hands for the first time and use it because it, it's, it's a logical thing. Community television is not bad television. It's not a centimetre less. It's just exact. 
We talk a lot about doing, you know, community television, and it actually takes a hell of a lot to just program one hour.